Welcome to a new reading vlog. My name's Lachlan. If you're new here, I am going to start Empire of Damned. As you saw in the last few clips, I've already set up my annotation system and I'm really excited. I didn't plan on decorating the first page, but then after I set up my system, I was like, you know what, let's, let's do that because this is one of my most anticipated reads of the entire year, aside from one that I already read, which was A House of Flame and Shadow. I've been waiting for this book for so long, well, for two years. I adore Empire of the Vampire. It's one of my all-time favorite books. And so I'm really, really excited to jump into this. I'm also really nervous. I don't know why. Normally I immediately read my anticipated reads like the day that they come out, but I've just been really busy and I haven't been able to do that. So I wanted to dedicate time to reading this book. I, w I kind of like to become engrossed I wanted to kind of binge it and I'm off work today because it's my husband and I's um, eighth anniversary. So we have plans, but before our plans, I'm going to be reading. I'm really excited. So yeah, I've got my cup of tea and I'm nice and cozy. I don't really plan on moving from this spot until I've gotten a good chunk of the way. I will be doing some annotating too. So stay tuned.
I am 71 pages in to Empire of the Damned. And I do not, I'm... This was the right decision to be able to dedicate a lot of time to this book because I do not want to put it down. Why was I scared? I think I was scared because I'm like, what if it, what if it disappoints me? The writing in this book is just incredible. I can't really talk much about like what's going on because it is the second book, but I love these characters so much. I'm having a blast annotating. I have a tab for writing specifically, but I also have a tab for like scenery. And to me, the difference between scenery and writing is like, there's a lot of scenery, so I can't tab every scenery scene, but I can tab my favorite scenes. I can tab scenes that are like, it really stands out to me or like, I can just paint a vivid picture in my head. I really want to tap that. Writing, I'll tab for that whenever I come across something that I'm like, that was said so stunningly. And then it's not necessarily like a favorite quote because like that's separate from writing. I know that doesn't like make a lot of sense, but to me it makes sense if I come across something that I'm like, I love how it was said, but it's not necessarily like a favorite quote then I'll tab it for writing. Love, 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 love. Love.
<laughs> She's like, uh, I don't want to cuddle right now. Okay, so it is, a l well, it's noon now. It's 11.59 and I'm on page 97. So I definitely have kind of been reading at a slower pace because I started reading around 9.30. Um, but yeah, 100 pages in. Shit. Oh. Yeah, 100 pages in and really, really loving this. Also, my vacuum just turned on, so that's gonna annoy the shit out of me. So I'm gonna put on my headphones and keep reading, but I'm obsessed. Like, truly in love. Yeah, and I'll keep you posted if that changes. Oh, I wanted to read my favorite quotes, but now that the vacuum's on, I'm just, I need to put on my headphones and just read. Also, if it looks like I changed my shirt, it's because I did. I forgot that I had an Empire the Vampire shirt, so match the vibe, you know? You know what actually hits harder than touch her and you die in a romantic sense? Touch her and you die when it comes to a friend. You know what I'm saying? Like platonic. It's not even like, it's familial. They're not related, but it's hard to explain, but it's, it's platonic touch her and you die. And I'm like, I love this shit so much. I am obsessed. I think my vacuum turned off so I can talk about my quotes. It's easier falling downhill than climbing up. It hurts to punch on with broken hands, but it's when darkness falls around us that we find the fire within. And then on page 99, it says, when your whole world is going to hell, sometimes all you need is someone who sounds like he knows the way. Words weighing upon my shoulders like broken wings. So if you've not but hate for me in your heart, believe me, I sympathize. Your fire is a candle flame compared to the hate I keep for myself. Feel free to hate me if it makes you feel better. I'll keep character redacted on this road for as long as they wish to walk it. The writing is just... Thank you. Also, the art. So I'm almost to book two. I have like 12 pages to book two. Wow, I need to start reading faster. Because it's 1230. I'm only on page 110. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to read. Uh, I like how the pages stand up like that. Anyways, <laughs> I'm on page 156, which is, I don't even know what chapter. The last chapter I read <laughs> was a doozy. It was like, had like this story or whatever someone was explaining the story to another character and i was i don't know if it was me or the, that chapter but i was like struggling to stay awake so i think i need more caffeine i have reading sprints on patreon in about 40 minutes it's 150 so uh the sprint start at 2 30 so i'm gonna go make another cup of tea and then dive back in. I'm still enjoying it, but it's about that time for another caffeine. And I think it wasn't like the best chapter so far. I'm still enjoying the book, but yeah, I just, things go in one eye out the other. I read that whole story and I'm like, I still don't even know like what any of that means and what's going on. I love the scenes where it's like they're traveling and like it's scenery and like the vibes. It's really vibes. 
is why I love this series so much and the writing obviously but when it comes to intricate like world stuff world building I'm like I don't know what the fuck's going on I do know what's going on but it's just a lot of details that I'm like I'm not gonna retain this too many details but yeah I'm gonna go make tea and then jump on sprints so I made a fresh cup of tea. I was listening to a little bit of Measure of a Man because I still have like 30 pages now to before I finish this. And Neville was giving Hermione like a pep talk, basically saying like, you know, she needs to take care of herself. And she has these like walls up when it comes to relationships and like friendships and stuff. It's so easy to digest. So I've been listening to it on audio and then I go back and tab and annotate the scenes so that's fun but i'm going to continue reading hopefully this cup of tea will like give me a little bit of caffeine and energy and we can keep reading i'm on page 166 and the banter between these two characters is everything. This character is teaching another character how to play chess and it's a vibe. My camera's about to die so I have to be quick but we're getting a different point of view. I'm shook it. So it's currently 3.30. I'm starting book three now. I'm on page 219 and I am confused as I don't know what the f going on. We were introduced to some new characters and now I'm like a little lost. I'm not gonna lie. So that's that's my update. I am lost in the sauce. I am continuing reading, but I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of frustrated because like, yeah, a different point of view is cool, but now I'm like, wait, why? I don't know. Like what? What's happening? I don't know. I'm still on sprints, but I'm lost, truly. Okay, so I got to page 250 of Empire of the Damned, so I'm happy with that. We sprinted for like three hours, which is pretty good. So we're gonna go to dinner, celebrating our eight year anniversary, which is like so insane, it makes me feel so old. I'll show you my outfit. It's very casual, it's not like a fancy place. Filled my bag full of candy. I love that. Chris, my heart up to die, but I know that you can't be making any promises. You keep changing up your mind, like spin the bottle, playing out of seek with all your problems. And I've been losing sleep, cause you promise no take back. The seats match my purse.
We're redoing part of our backyard because we haven't had any grass, just rocks. So we're laying down some grass, mostly because we have three dogs. They would like to have some grass. So here's the before. Hello, we have a lot to talk about. First off, I guess the last time I talked to you was when I was like, two or three hundred pages into Empire of the, of the Damned and um we were like going to oh we saw that movie it's called The Night A Night with the Devil or something like that it was good I didn't love it it was it was definitely intriguing and I was like a little scary cat I do like getting scared I like scary movies and stuff like that so this morning today is Saturday and I didn't vlog all week but it's basically because I was just trying to take some time to like relax and just like, I don't know, read. And yeah, it was great. I had a few days off of work. We were going to go on a cruise for our anniversary, but we wanted to save money. Life is super expensive right now. So we wanted to save money and because we do need a new bed. So we're saving it for that. And then, yeah, so no cruise, but it's fine. We did have a great anniversary regardless. Anyway, I wanted to update you on my thoughts on this book. I talked about how jarring the point of view change was. And then the character that we were following, well, one of the characters, the voice wasn't exactly what I pictured. So I struggled with that. Like the narrator was fine, but it wasn't exactly, I don't, I really struggled at first. Like it was super, super jarring. And just following the other point of view, I'm not gonna talk spoilers, but it just wasn't my favorite for some reason. And I think it's because I, one of the reasons why I love this book, the world and the story is because Gabe, Gabriel de Leon is very, very like, he's such a smart ass. I find a lot of his humor to be pretty funny. And then we also have like Ash, which is his sword, his traumatized sword. <laughs> I adore an animate object that is actually like a character and has a personality. I love that within books. Those things when we were not following Gabe's point of view, I was finding myself really, really struggling. Struggling so bad to stay in the zone. I kept zoning out just like whole chapters that I was like, this was so fucking boring. A lot of it was overwritten. I do love like the atmosphere and the vibes of this, of the book. Adore so, so much. Like I eat that shit up. But there were times where I was like, oh my God, can we get it moving along? Because this is just like really dragging. Also another thing, it's so funny that I, whenever I was doing my tabbing system, I added a tab for love and romance. And I don't know why, like, what was I thinking? Because I, Empire of the Vampire does not have, like, a ton of romance in it. It's got, like, maybe a sprinkle here and there, but it's not, like, a, a thing, right? It's not, like, something you would tab, have a whole tab for. You would put it in, like, miscellaneous or something. So I was annoyed with myself that I did that because, obviously, there's, it's not, like, this is heavy with romance. It's just not. I mean, yes, there are romance scenes and there is romance sprinkled in but it's not enough for it to be a whole tab so I was annoyed my, with myself on that but overall I, I would still say I enjoyed the book. I feel like it could have been edited down just a little bit. Once I got going into the other point of view it started to get a little bit better but I just struggled at first like really really struggled and I found myself getting frustrated and then I was like okay it's getting better and then it was just rocky a little bit you know what I'm saying like and it shows my tabs too like if I can show you the tab. So in the beginning, tabbing like crazy. And then still tabbing. And then towards, the, oh, like, it's just not as much. I don't know if you can see. Like, you can see where the lulls are. You know what I'm saying? In the story for me. You can just visibly see it. And that is so crazy to me. <laughs> 
So yeah, I'm really glad though that I had time to read this this week. If I hadn't had a few days off work, I probably would have taken two weeks to read this, although I did enjoy it. And the ending is really good. I don't want you all to think I didn't like it, but I'm just excited to pick something else up. So we haven't talked in a few days. I want to do like a midweek check-in and we have quite a bit to talk about. On Sunday, I started An Ember in the Ashes and let's see, I got 86 pages in and I'm going to consider this a soft DNF. At first I was going to hard DNF it, but then I saw Katie talk about, I think like the second book in the series. Uh, Katie is reading. I think that's her channel name. I'm new to her channel and I was like, well, maybe I should maybe I just like the right book wrong time Not in the mood for it type thing because it is a military fantasy. I feel like I've read military fantasy before but Maybe not. I don't know. So I just have to pick this up when I'm in the mood for it but yeah, I was a little bored I'm going back and forth on whether or not it's a hard DNF or a soft DNF if it's a hard DNF, I'll have to unhaul the whole series because I do own all of the books, unfortunately. I bought them in 2021 when the last book came out and it was like, I feel like there was some hype around it. So I ended up buying the whole series. So whenever I DNF'd that, I picked up A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I read this in almost one sitting. So I read this audibly. I listened to it on Spotify and I was knitting like all day Sunday. That's pretty much all I did was listen to this and knit. And so I finished it on Monday, which was April 1st. And I really love this. It's about, I mean, it's a YA like mystery thriller. And this has a lot of hype and I can understand why. It's, it's very, it's actually pretty heavy. It has some really heavy topics. So I suggest that you check out the trigger warnings because um, I'm not going to list them off. Uh, I feel like it's the reader's responsibility to look up trigger warnings for books if you are sensitive to certain things. And um, there were things that I had wished I had known going into this. I wish I had looked up reviews and I wish I had just like known what I was setting myself up for because it was pretty heavy and there were some things that I was just like not really in the mood to read about, you know. Um, I probably would have picked this up later. However, I really enjoyed this despite like it being heavy at times and you know dealing with certain topics I wasn't really prepared for. This was really good like I had a really really good time with this. The longer I sit with it the more I like it because I just there was a, a lot that uh, I love a thriller that has more than like one twist and turn and I also enjoyed the ride enjoyed the the ride to get to all of the little twists and turns and just really enjoyed it. We're following a high schooler named Pip or is she in college? No, I'm pretty sure she's in college and she's investigating a murder that that really never got solved. It got solved, but it didn't. People basically like pinned the murder on this one person and she's like, I that doesn't sit right with me. And so she makes it like her school project to investigate. I really liked the story and I really liked the plot twist. So yeah, I had posted a book on haul. Quite a few people messaged me, but specifically my friend Deja messaged me and was like, you cannot unhaul that book. You have to read it. It's really good. Like it's so good. And so I was like, okay, I'll keep it. Like I'll read it. 
And then I have quite a few comments being like, Good Girl's Guide to Murder is really good and it is a standalone. Because one of the reasons I got was going to unhaul it is because I thought it was a series. I didn't think it was a standalone, but it is. You can read it as a standalone. So for that reason, I read it and kept it. And I really, really liked it. Um, pleasantly surprised. I'm teetering on four and a half or five stars. I think probably four and a half because it didn't like evoke super strong emotions. I didn't like cry or I don't know. I mean, I did get pretty angry at times. And then there was like one specific thing that just like, I was like, oh, that's the only part that I'm like, oh, that's so, that would literally never happen. There was like a teacher that got pursued by some young girl. I was like, oh yeah, right. As if like some cute little girl would pursue a crusty old dirty ass teacher. Anyway, that's what I read on Sunday and then finished this Monday morning via audio. And the audiobook is not great, by the way. I don't love that narrator, but you know, it was free. I listened to it on, on Spotify. Then because I am trying to read down my physical TBR, I, you know, for April, yeah, we're in April, right? Yeah, okay. For April, I didn't necessarily make like a strict TBR because I, my goal is to like look at books on my bookshelves and just freaking read them. This is the year that I am going to read down my TBR. So this has been on my TBR for forever. Y'all, I read this so quickly. I read this in two days, which I mean, I was working, so I could have read it in one day if I hadn't been working. So good. This is a cyborg Cinderella retelling where she's a mechanic. She's a cyborg and she like works on androids. And this is like a, it has a really good mix between politics because it's like got some politics, but it's not too much. It's just like a little bit for the girlies who don't like a lot of like politicking in their books. This is like perfect blend. Um, at first, like probably the first half was a little, felt a little bit slow to get into only because I was like, okay, this is sci-fi. So sometimes I have a hard time picturing sci-fi things. However, I am here to announce that I officially really enjoy YA sci-fi because authors tend to make sci-fi a little bit more palatable, a little bit more easy to digest with YA. At least that's what I've experienced because I've read adult sci-fi fantasies and I'm just like not into it like I just struggle with it so but I've read a lot of YA sci-fi and I'm like I really like this so I think YA sci-fi is my sweet spot when it comes to sci-fi um because I used to say I wasn't a sci-fi girly but a lot of sci-fi a lot of YA sci-fi that I love or that I read I end up loving so you know there's that but this was so good like I am going to give this a really high, I'll just give it four and a half stars because I really loved it. And I loved it so much that I immediately jumped into Scarlet. This is very similar to Cinder where it is third person and we're following multiple point of views, but it's not like too many. We're following, I think three point of views in this one. In Cinder, it was two point of views. And in this one, we're following Scarlet. And this is a Little Red Riding Hood retelling. My thoughts on Cinder is that like the beginning was repetitive, like the first half. But this one, I'm enjoying so much more. So like, I, actually, Cinder would probably be a solid four star. But this one, I am, let's see what page I'm on. I'm on page 274. And this is going so freaking well, you guys. Like, I am really obsessed with this. Like, ugh. I'm not tabbing or annotating, but I am at the same time because I've come across a few lines that I'm like, bitch, you have to highlight that. So I have highlighted a little bit. Let's see if I can show you. I've done a little bit of highlighting and tabbing and I'm just like, I, I'm like so impressed with this series. This is really, really good. So even though we're following Scarlet we are still getting Cinder's point of views every now and then. So it's like, we're following, oh, I just really love how this is written. I love it so, so, so much. There's a little bit of like romance. It's not like heavy on the romance, but it's just like, just enough to keep me satisfied, especially for a YA sci-fi. I'm just, this is going so, so well, you guys. Like I could not be more pleased, but I'll keep you posted on my final thoughts on this because I do plan on probably finishing this tonight, which, oh my gosh, by the way, I'm going on podcast with 
Haley and Aspen. Yeah, that's her name, Aspen. On the Gabbing It Up podcast, because Deja is sick. Bless her soul. Hope you feel better soon, Deja. But this is going to be posted by the time you already feel better, hopefully. But yeah, so we're going on tonight with that. I'm super excited. That's at 5 p.m. A little bit out of my comfort zone. I don't. I know I'm holding this up talking about something else, but a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm still excited for it because, I don't know, I just, I woke up in a great mood and then Haley messaged me asking and I was like, no. Yes. My mind says no because I'm so awkward. So I'm like, me on a podcast? Absolutely not. But then I was like, but why not? Like, I don't know. I listen to their podcast every week. It could be fun. So anyway, doing that tonight. And then my other current read is Scarred by Emily McIntyre. And I'm currently 96 pages into this. And this is another read, okay. Well, the <laughs> it's a retelling, okay. But in the beginning of the book, this was gifted to me. So I have like the little note right there. In the beginning of the book, it says, Scarred is a dark royal romance. It's a fractured fairy tale, not fantasy or a retelling. But I'm like, Miss Ma'am, this is kind of a retelling. Okay, it's not a retelling, but it, it has like inspired by Lion King vibes, if you know what I'm saying. Scarred, a scar, yeah. So apparently he is a villain, which I'm getting that so far. It is a dark romance and I go in with different expectations with dark romances. Also, I've had this on my shelf for at least two years now. So I'm really glad that I just like, I was staring at my shelves the other night and I was like, what have, what have I not read? Oh, there you go. I picked it up. I just started reading it and I read 66 pages in one hour, which is really good for me because it was right before bed. I just started reading it and then before I knew it, I had 66 pages read. So you can say it's going well. And yeah, I do have different expectations with dark romance than I do with contemporary romance. With contemporary romance, I don't like when authors throw in dark things or like a hero who is kind of like morally gray. I don't really like that in contemporary romances. I, I kind of think of that as like a red flag. But when I'm reading a dark romance, something is just different. Like my, I just have, I go in with expectations of knowing this man is not gonna be a green flag. You know what I'm saying? So bear that in mind if you, you know, pick this up. It's not like a cutesy, oh, he's so sweet kind of romance. He, you know, he has rough edges. Like he's all rough edges, okay? He's based on a villain, 96 pages in, so nothing crazy has happened so far, but I can eat this shit up like candy, especially before bed. That's really like, this is my before bed read. And then I also, okay, so I have another current read. It is Crescent City. I'm reading Crescent City for the sixth time. I yes, I am. And it's because I have the graphic audio and I just wanted something like, it wasn't necessarily in the mood for a comfort read, but I wanted something, what's the word? Not identifiable. Something familiar. Something familiar, something I was familiar with. And obviously I'm very familiar with Crescent City. I've read it five times before. So I was like, okay, I'll listen to the, um, graphic audio for Crescent City. And y'all, I'm not gonna lie. I don't love some of the acting, cause I mean, it's voice acting. Some of the voice acting. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because I'm so particular about Crescent City. It's like, it's, the, it's up there for me. Okay, it's up there. Like the ceiling, it's like the ceiling, Crescent City. And that made no sense, but it, it kind of made sense at the same time. So I'm not, mm, I think I'm going to take a pause on it. It's only the first half. So like I have the graphic audio. I'm currently on part nine. It says I have two hours left of the audiobook, And I think I'm going to start listening to Funny Story by Emily Henry. Cause I do have the audiobook on Libro FM and Initially, I was going to wait until more people read it and see if I like it. But honestly, I kind of want to read this one with no expectations and no, really no expectations. Like, I've not given any of Emily Henry's books five stars. And so 
But the fact that I don't have to pay for this, it's free, it's a free audiobook, so I can just listen to it. That is like encouraging me to just like, okay, why not? I'll just pick it up. So I think I'm going to switch over to that from the graphic audio of Crescent City and I'll finish that later. But I did read quite a bit of that on audio, Crescent City, this week. So there's that. But I just, I don't know. I'm not like loving the graphic audio for it. And I probably won't. So I probably won't buy the second part of it because they do come separate. Like you have to buy the first and second part separately, which is such... Like I get it, they put a lot of work into it, so I understand, but it's still like expensive, you know? So, and I, I don't even remember buying the Crescent City version. I think I pre-ordered it, you know? I don't remember doing it, but it popped up in my library and I was like, okay, I guess I have this. That's my reading update. I'm about to film a book unboxing haul. So you can go check that out because that'll be published on Sunday before this vlog gets published. I'll talk to you guys later. Later. I just finished filming. <sighs> book unboxing, book haul, whatever, and I have a mess to pick up and I don't want to do it. I don't want to clean this up. I have to put all these books away and I don't want to do it. <sighs> anyway, let's see what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. Okay, I need to do, I need to finish with work and then I'm going to try and edit that haul video. Obviously, I need to clean up this mess and then I was going to try and film the house tour, but first I need to clean up I need to clean the house in general, so I need to do that. That's my main focus. And I'm also going to start Funny Story by Emily Henry on audio. Um, so I'm going to start that and I'll let, let you guys know my thoughts. Spoiler free, of course. That's my plan for the day. Hope you're having a great day wherever you're watching this. We'll talk later. some reading updates. First off, I want to talk about funny people? No, funny story. Happy place and then funny story. I keep saying funny people or happy story. I don't know. Anyway, it's funny story and let's see, I think I'm like 30% in. I'm 37% in. I'm currently on chapter 12 which is Thursday, June 6th because it goes by like months or whatever. And it says 72 days until I can leave. That's like the title of the chapter. I'm obsessed with this book. I am so appalled. I'm so shocked because I've not given any Emily Henry books five stars. So I really went into this being like, okay, the audiobook is free. Thank you so much, Libby. I will listen to it. Like it won't hurt. Let's just give it a go with no expectations because I went into happy place. Wait, 
a happy, yeah, happy place, hoping that it would be a five star because I was like, I've never given Heavenly Henry a five star. I want this to be a five star. Also, the cover was pink, so I was like, I hope it's five star. I, it was not. I gave the book like two stars because mostly because of miscommunication trope and then just a lot of other things annoyed me. But oh my god. Funny story. I'm obsessed. The main character is cynical. She's like a very, I don't want to say negative person because she's just more like realistic, but I just can relate so much to her when it comes to, like she's a big complainer. She says that she's a born complainer and that like just having someone that you can talk to that will empathize with you takes the sting out of whatever is upsetting you. Anyway, there was a quote like that and I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed. And then the, the love interest, the male character, he doesn't have like a big family or support system or whatever. And I'm like, finally a book with characters that don't have like this huge, wonderful family. Having like almost no family, little to no family. It's fake dating because they're, they're both RSVP to their ex's wedding. She's also a librarian. I took some notes on my phone because whenever, you know, it's audio and like I can't really like tab it. I have... The, oh, I want to go back and annotate this book, which I'm going to wait to get the paperback. I I, I ended up pre-ordering the paperback on Amazon, but it was like $25. So I don't know if it's coming from the UK. I don't know if it's like a UK paperback or if I got bamboozled and it's actually going to be a hardback because I tried to find whether or not it would be released in paperback and I literally couldn't. Like everything was saying hardback. So I might have gotten bamboozled. But if I did, it's fine. I'll just return it because I don't want the hardback. Like, I don't want that. I'll just wait until next year when the paperback's released. But anyway, so they're roommates too. Did I mention that? Oh my god. I am explaining the book horribly, but like, it's fine. All you need to know is that I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this book so far. It could be the first Emily Henry book that I give five stars to. And I just wish the cover was nicer because I don't... <laughs> like the the color it's almost like it's definitely blue but then on some social media posts it looks almost like a not like periwinkle but it almost looks a little like it's got like a little purple in it but not really not enough you know it's it's a blue cover to me but maybe the actual physical book is more purple than blue i don't know i'm not a big fan of the cov cover color of the cover. I'm not a big fan of the cover in general because some of her other books are just like have such cute covers and this one I'm like what happened? So of course it would be the one cover that I actually hate. I end up loving the book. I hate that for me. So whatever. I might order like the UK edition because I looked at that and that was kind of cute. Anyway, I am loving this audiobook. So I'll keep you posted, but I'm just like, wow. I am just flabbergasted with how much I love these characters, how realistic they are to me. And it's going great. It's going really great. Um, and then, so today is Saturday. We woke up and Jake was like, you want to go to Barnes and & Noble? And I was like, absolutely I do. I didn't buy any books. Um, we just kind of like perused. We got some coffee. It was delicioso. Which, if you didn't know, the cafe and Barnes Noble, none of those proceeds go to Starbucks, if anyone is wondering. Because I know a lot of people do, do not want to support Starbucks right now because of the boycott. But if you go to Barnes, the money is not going to Starbucks. It's going to Barnes and Noble. But anyway, I finished a book yesterday. I finished Scarlet. And you guys, I'm giving this book five stars. I loved this so much. It was just like so comforting. I don't know how to describe this. But YA sci-fi really just does it for me. This was a Red Riding Hood retelling. And this one was just really, really interesting. The world is made up of people. Well, not like made up of, but it has like these people that have these abilities to manipulate other people and just to like kind of get what they want. And Scarlet, no, Cinder has that ability and she can manip manipulate people, but she tries not to use it. She tries to only use it for like the good of the world. But with that ability comes people who abuse it and they manipulate people. 
Well, Scarlet, her and her grandmother are immune to this. They essentially cannot get manipulated. They cannot be swayed. And it's really interesting. So the powers at B, or the powers at play, whatever, they are trying to figure out why her grandmother, they had like captured her grandmother. So that's where like the Little Red Riding Hood comes into play. And there's the love interest, his name is Wolf. I am just, I know it sounds kind of corny, but like it's really good. Like there's just like a sprinkle of romance, you know what I'm saying? And I am obsessed with that. Like I'm obsessed with this specific like subgenre of YA fantasy, like the sci-fi with just like a splash of romance. Cause I think sometimes romance, fantasy, romance or whatever, they try really, really hard on the romance and it becomes too much. It's like, okay, the romance, if you don't like the romance, it kind of hinders the rest of the book. But this, even if you don't like the romance, it's not gonna affect the reading experience much because of so much else is going on. But I enjoy the romance because it's just like enough for, for me to keep like, oh my God, like that's cute, that's adorable. And when this ended, I was not prepared because at the end of each book, there's like, more pages like a bonus content and stuff and so I got to the the last page and I was like wait no way like no way this is the end because it's so good like it just could have kept going and there's no like epilogue so chapter 47 was the last chapter and I finished and I was like what the heck and that's when I know I'm really loving a book is when I'm sad it ends you know because the best books are the ones where you just don't want them to end and I feel like even though I didn't cry and it didn't give me like visceral reactions, I never wanted it to end. And for that, I'm like five stars. That's, that's, that's five stars. Also, I was not, I've not been in the mood to annotate. My next annotation project, so to speak, is going to be Chasing the Sun, which is a fan fiction that my friend Mel bound for me. I'm going to annotate that, but I've not been in the mood just because like I've been having issues with like my muscles. I don't know how to describe this, but like... My hands have been hurting, like my hands hurt. It feels like I've been working all day on my hands. And if y'all know me, the only thing I do with my hands is on the computer, like editing and then stuff for work and emails and shit like that. So obviously holding books sometimes, but like, you know, yeah, so I've not been in the mood to annotate for what, that's one of the reasons, but I did dab a little bit, you know? Like there were just times where I was like, I have to tap this. I have to freaking tap this. So it wasn't even like I was actively being like, oh, let me tap these scenes. But I would come across things that I would be like, I have to freaking tap this. So five stars, five freaking stars. And I started, immediately started Cress. It's going really well. There's some, it's a... There's some like, not, I wouldn't say, is it world building? I guess you could say world building. Um, so I'm, I'm not too far into it. I'm only 38 pages in and I had to edit a video. So I didn't really get a lot of reading time last night, but that's okay because I finished this and I was really, really pleased with it. So I'm super excited for this. This one follows Cress. This is a Rapunzel retelling because she has like really long hair and she's been like, locked up in this like satellite and she's kind of like a little computer nerd she programs this satellite character thing to be her companion while she's like locked up winter is the next book and i'm so excited to see like what is going to be my favorite book from the series because oh my god i'm just like really really pleased with all of it also, I think I know who the love interest is. I think it is, what is his name? Carswell Thorne. I think it's Carswell Thorne. I think that's the love interest. But yeah, so I'm excited for this. And then update on Scarred. I am on page 96. So I did make some progress in this the other night. And just look how pretty this looks with the little gold tassel. I just love that. So yeah, this is going pretty well too. Um, it's not like too dark right now or anything. It's really good before bed to just help me fall asleep. You know, I just sometimes like a good mindless romance that I can consume before bed. That's my reading update. Today I'm going to be vlogging for Patreon. I think I'm going to start How Does It Feel? Because today is April 6th and 
the months go by fast, right? So, you know, I gotta get this vlog done and I gotta get this book read. I'm terrified for this, honestly. But anyway, that's my little reading update. So I'll check in with you guys and then plus, funny story, I don't have the physical copy of that. But yeah, I'll check in with you guys when I read some more um, or just when I have something else interesting to talk about. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you later. here for a reading check-in. Um, I wanted to let you guys know I finished Cress. Um, I need to take this bookmark out, but isn't this bookmark so pretty? My friend Hannah gave it to me. I just love it. So I finished this a bit ago. I'm gonna give this four and a half stars. I really liked it. I didn't care for the romance. It was just kind of like not as good as I felt like as it was in Scarlet. Cress's and Thorn's romance was just like I don't know it was fine it was cute but it wasn't like anything like special and the plot in this one is a little bit convoluted uh it just got like a little bit confusing at times whose point of view it was because we are following like a lot of people's point of view in this one because in the first book we're just following two people and then in scarlet we're following like three to four and then in this one i think it's like up to six or seven I kind of lost count as to how many point of views we got and it just says like the chapter number it doesn't say the point of view I mean it says it usually in the first sentence the name of the person but still like it just kind of got a little like I definitely had to pay attention to that um, I did tab a little bit and then I did annotate just like a little tiny tiny bit nothing major mainly because I really didn't plan on annotating and um, yeah, but there were a few really good lines. Let me see. This is page 402 and 403 and 404. Those pages in particular, I just really liked. And yeah, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really good. I'm like really pleasantly surprised at how much I'm loving the series. The next book is Winter. I own the series as like a box set and I know that there's like two novellas or something. So I'm gonna see what their reading order is. If I'm supposed to read Winter next or if I'm supposed to read the novellas next, I'm not really sure. But um, I'm definitely gonna pick up Winter soon. I'm super excited for that. We've already been introduced to that character and I don't know what retelling that one is, but once I start it, I'll figure it out. That'll be in my next reading vlog. Um, and then I wanted to update you on Scarred by Emily McIntyre. I unfortunately am not like loving this. I'm kind of bored. I am on chapter 20, so like 140 pages in this and I'm just kind of bored. Like I feel like nothing has really happened and the writing is nice i mean it's it's written very interestingly it's not like it doesn't feel super contemporary but i know in the back of my mind that it is contemporary so i'm kind of like i'm not really sure but i just i don't know i don't really have any thoughts on it so far 
I just feel like not a lot has happened. Um, it is kind of a little bit atmospheric. I like the descriptions and all of that. I don't want to say it's atmospheric because it's not like... I, I just feel like the author does a good job with descriptions. So if you like that kind of thing, you might really like this. But I'm just having a hard time picking it back up again. So I don't think that I'll finish it in this vlog, but I don't know. We'll try. Okay, and then How Does It Feel by Janine O'Reilly. I... Oh, I'm reading this for Patreon, so I'm not going to talk about my thoughts, but I'm 155 pages into this and poker face when it comes to my Patreon books because I just think it's fun that way. You can join Patreon if you want to watch my reading vlog on that. Um, and then, so this is a very interesting update because I didn't have this book that I'm about to talk about in 2021 because, um, I don't know, I think I was just a different reader at the time. Like, my taste in romance has changed a lot. Like, what... I can tolerate and what I can't and like what I find entertaining and what I don't like I don't it just changed a lot and this is the first book in the series and so I wanted to pick up the rest of the series I have I've read the second book which is Dead Man Walking this is a motorcycle dark romance series and so I was like Lessons in Corruption I really just wanted to give it another try I just really wanted to. I really loved Jana Darling's newest release, Serpentine Valentine. And then I just wanted to continue this series because I do own some of the books physically. And I, for some reason, I just was like, let me give the first book another try. You never know. And you guys, I am so pleasantly surprised with how much I'm enjoying this. It's actually kind of crazy because like the things that bothered me the first time I picked it up don't bother me at all. I'm on page 153, uh, the beginning of chapter 13, and he calls her babe a lot. And that was the main reason I DNF'd it. I was like, oh, this is like uh, kind of annoying. But for some reason, I'm not annoyed by it at all. It's bonkers. This book is absolutely fucking bonkers, but I'm just... I guess I'm in the mood for it. It's like the right time for me to read this and I'm eating this shit up. I'm having a blast with it. Just know that this book is absolutely bonkers. What's her name? Cressida? Cassida? I don't even know the main girl's name. It starts with a C. She's a teacher and she, at the beginning of the book, she meets King. They meet in the beginning of the book and they kind of like hit it off and she's like really into him. He's really into her. And then a couple of weeks go by and then it turns out he ends up in her, he ends up being in her class, like as a student. And she's like mind blown. She's like, what? So it is a taboo. I don't really like super, super taboo stuff. Um, obviously, if I know going into it that it's taboo, I have a different expectation and I can usually handle it a lot more. But I think that's also why I'm like, the dynamic is not like what I thought it was going to be. She is actually a very like inexperienced person. She was basically like a child bride. She got married right out of like when she turned 18 and then she was married for like a while, like eight years or something and didn't really like live a lot. And she's just kind of naive and sheltered a little. So he is super experienced. So the, the power dynamic is like is very interesting. I've only sat down to read this twice and I'm already on page 140. Like I've read it before bed and that's literally it. So yeah, I'm having a great time. Um, so I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on that, but I'm really happy that I gave it a second try. I think also sometimes like if I DNF a book because I'm like, it's too jarring or something, or if I'm too taken aback, and I can come back to it at a later time with the expectation, knowing what I'm getting myself into, I can have a totally different reading experience. And I think that's a really interesting. So I'm really liking that. Um, and then did I have another reading update? I don't think so.
I'm currently listening to the audiobook while I knit and I'm literally crying. I'm on chapter 19 and this book is amazing. I have chills. Like my gut is wrenched. This book is too fucking real, oh my god. The irony of the title. Funny story. It's not a fucking funny story. There's nothing funny about it. I love Emily Henry. She knows how to write like an emotional romance. But I've never given any of her books five stars. Like I feel like now I'm like, okay, now I get it. I get it. Like. If people felt this, like, impacted by her other books, yeah. I get it. Like, I get why people are so obsessed. Which, I mean, I've liked her books, but I've never, like, been obsessed. But, like, I feel like, oh my god, I could... Not the sniffles. <laughs> So I'll show you guys my progress on my blanket. I knitted four rows, which is pretty good because each row takes me 30 minutes. Funny story is so good. I think maybe I'll try and finish it tomorrow. Tonight, I'm about to go get ready for bed. It's 10.42 and I'm gonna read more of Lessons in Corruption. Good night. <laughs> Hello, so today is Thursday. It's been two days since we last talked, which was on Tuesday night. And I wanted to do a quick update before I start work today, but I finished Lessons in Corruption last night and I actually really enjoyed this and I'm really glad that I gave it a second try because yeah, this was like, it was super corny but I enjoyed it. There were definitely things that were not perfect. It's not a perfect romance for me. I still found it enjoyable. I have a hard time with taboo romance because I'm like, I can eat this shit up, but I don't necessarily ship them, if that makes sense. While I was reading, I wasn't really like shipping them, you know? But then by the time I got to the ending, I was like, okay, I can, I can see, I can get behind this. So yeah, I really liked it. I'm going to give it three and a half stars, like a really high three star. There's a difference between like a, oh, I didn't really care for this, but it was good. So I'm giving it three stars versus I really enjoyed this, but I just can't in my mind, it's not a four star. And that's what my three and a half star means. Okay. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be rereading Dead Man Walking before I pick up the next book in the series, which I don't even know what the third book is. But yeah, I want to refresh myself on the plot of Dead Man Walking and just the romance in general, because I really think I'm going to enjoy the overarching plot of this whole series. So I'm super excited about this. Yeah, it's definitely like Sons of Anarchy type vibes. Motorcycle Club. And I already updated you guys on Funny Story, right? Like, I gave that book five stars. Did I talk to you guys about it? Shit, I don't think I did. Okay, so wait, hold on. Yeah, I also finished Happy, I mean, Happy Place. I keep calling it Funny People, Funny Place. It's funny story. I finished it. I gave it five stars. Amazing. I put a review on Goodreads that said the book cover should be green because this whole romance is one giant green flag and the book in general is just like a green flag. It would have just been perfect if that cover was green. I just don't like the cover. Anyways, yeah, five stars. I feel like y'all already saw that coming, but I did finish that on audio yesterday. Amazing. <laughs> For some reason, I thought I already updated you guys on that, but I guess not. So that means in this vlog, I read one, two, three, four, five, six. Funny Story makes seven books, which I think is pretty good. Um, 
Definitely, this is physical TBR, physical TBR, physical TBR, physical TBR. Four books off of my physical TBR. Technically, Empire of the Damned is physical TBR, but it wasn't like a backlist TBR book, so I don't know. That was a pre-order in a new book this year, so does that even count? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to close out this vlog because this footage is probably like insane. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, go ahead and leave, leave a motorcycle emoji and a teddy bear. I feel like that kind of sums up the motorcycle romance genre. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. And if you do want more content from me, I do have a Patreon where I upload two extra videos a month and then once a month reading sprints and other content if you are interested in that. And then um, I also have an Instagram. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.